<laughs> if you're going to say something about what you're holding, you got to say it on the podcast because that's. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, before yeah, you get into that, though, before you yeah. get into that, yesterday, mm -hmm. day three. Yeah, day three. If I could, I am all screwed up on days. Actually, because... I think it was day four. <sighs> what? Wait, right, no, Thursday, Friday, day Tuesday. It's Thursday today, right? It's day four of the court case. See, this is why I'm all screwed up. There's been two days oh. of testimony, right? We had no yeah. Monday, then we had Wednesday, then we had Thursday. That's four. I thought we had Tuesday. What about Tuesday? Tuesday, Wednesday. We had Tuesday and Wednesday. You know what? Math continues to elude me. <laughs> Listen, when, when I understand math better than you, something is wrong. Yeah, I think it's because I'm going on vacation next week and I'm, yeah, my brain is all... Out. You already checked out, yeah. Like, on that... Um, okay. anyways, right. Satya took whatever. the stand. He wasn't on the stand very long. Notably, he said, which I find hilarious. He's like, I don't like exclusive games. I don't love that term. He would if he was, uh, the number so, one in the industry. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I'd also like to understand how he feels about per core licensing, because I bet he loves that. A little call back to the, uh, background of the server business. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I, I miss the days when per core server licensing was like the big controversy at Microsoft, you mm -hmm. know? Those are the good days. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bobby uh, Kotick took to the stand and was like, yeah, we should have built the Call of Duty for Switch. <laughs> he notably said, I didn't think it was actually going to be like a thing that took off, and it did. Yep. Yep. That's probably the worst thing he's ever done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yeah, what else? They also tried to buy Square. I think it's pronounced Enix. Square Enix, Enix, the Japanese Enix. Okay, yeah. company they put together. It was just like the Sega thing where mm -hmm. they were trying to acquire it, but obviously they didn't for reasons that we don't quite that know. That one would have been good. Is it, I think of them as being part of Sony. Are they? Don't they have some huge connection they with Sony? Final, yeah, they they have deals with Sony because obviously they're so, in yeah. the same country. And... Yeah, so this would have given them... Uh, some exposure in the Asian market, which they've always done poorly in, and mm. also mobile, right? Which they've yep. just basically ignored. Yep, the more economic experts. I really think that this case is going to come down to, well, I shouldn't say only comes down to, whether or not the judge agrees that the Switch is or isn't a competitor to the Xbox and PlayStation. Like, if you bring the See, Switch... Because I... that's, that's the FTC's only argument. That's the only argument I've heard from the FTC that was like... <sighs> hmm. Because it's not we game define, exclusivity. It's we, not we Call can define of Duty. markets it's, uh, it's different ways. Switch. But yeah, I I don't I don't think it matters how narrow we try to define this market. Microsoft is always behind Sony, no matter what, and mm -hmm. by a wide margin usually. And um, I also just you know the, this my central issue here is we have this serially serial abuse, abuser right. They have not just gone down this exclusive path, which makes sense strategically, right? We I. Whatever. We don't like it as gamers, but from the company's perspective, it makes sense to do that. But they've also crossed this line where they've paid publishers not to bring their products to Xbox. Right. I, and that's just anti-competitive. It's straight up anti-competitive. They're the dominant party in this industry. Mm -hmm. But what we're, what we're worried about over here is Microsoft, which has done this once, twice, may do it a couple more times, compared to this company that has done it a million times. Not pay... Sorry, done exclusives. Not 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 pay other pay companies not to publish on Sony, which by the way it was a strategy they considered because of what Sony does. But what what we're looking at is Microsoft and like what if they make some games exclusive? Oh my God, what if they do? They'll be just like Sony, except on a much smaller scale. They'll just behaving as the market leader behaves. Why are we restricting a, a minority player in this market? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I we'll see. They, crazy. They it's continue crazy. today. We'll learn more today. Amy Hood actually takes the stage today, oh. which notably oh. her some of her statements came out last night that if they want to buy a company for more than five hundred million, which mm -hmm. I mean just five hundred million, they have to get board approval. But that's like an astronomically high number. Yeah, it is. But that explains why they might bought some smaller studios. I don't remember the name of it anymore, but it was there was one that was real. They spent 147 million or something, I think was the yeah. figure. And so this was just uh you know, it's like the agreement you have with your spouse. It's like the spouse spousal approval number, mm -hmm. you know? Like I'm gonna go to the store, it's like fifty bucks. I'm like, I can just buy it. I don't have to call my wife for that, but I want to buy like a thousand dollar smartphone. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe I need to check in. Yeah. Just <laughs> you know, it's the same. It's uh economics works the same everywhere, really. 
Speaking of $1,000 smartphone. Mm, I wish I was speaking of a $1,000 smartphone. Yeah, it's actually about twice that, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. I mean, I didn't um, – see, I didn't – I'm not expecting to keep this one. Which one So is even it? if I think we want one of these, I would return this and then go through the process where I actually trade in a phone or, mm -hmm. you know, do whatever. Because I – for this one, I just bought it outright because I didn't want to get involved with a, a trade when I'm – I didn't I, – I mean, honestly, I didn't think I'd want to keep this. The – the, this being, sorry, the Pixel Fold. The the dark horse here is my wife has wanted a folding phone ever since there have been folding phones, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, she may actually want to, she may want to keep it, right? In which case I'd have her trade in her phone. Um, but we'd have to return this and get a new one. Anyway, I um, I think the, the weird thing about this one is I actually like this a lot more than I thought I was going to like it. Really? Like I really like it. Like I... And, you know, I'm, there's so many things I kind of want to write about this. Um, there's this notion of, like, hybrid devices, like the, the one device that can do two things. Like the Pixel tablet is like a, a tablet, but it's also a smart display, right? Or you have, like, a, a Surface Pro, which is a tablet, but it's also like a computer, like a laptop or whatever, right? You know, the dream is you can replace two devices and have one that, you know, th the compromises aren't too great that it actually makes sense. And I actually think... For me, I, this could accomplish that. Um, hmm. the The problem is, the price of this thing, you know, after taxes and everything is, like, and I got the basis model right, nineteen hundred bucks. Oof. So, you have nineteen hundred dollars to spend. Um, you could buy a the highest end Pixel for nine hundred dollars, I think, or eight hundred dollars, whatever the price is. Mm -hmm. Say nine hundred, just to make the math simple. And a Pixel tablet's five hundred bucks. That's fourteen hundred dollars. You just save five hundred dollars. <laughs> well, yeah four, you know, three something or four something, you know, with taxes. So, of course, the Pixel tablet can't fit in your pocket, <laughs> you know. It cannot. I, I think the thing they got right on this device is it works well as a phone, just like when you, mm -hmm. let me see if I can turn this thing on, um, you know, just as like a like a phone. It's not super thick. Um, when it's when it's open, it's incredibly thin. It's thinner than any smartphone I've ever used, for sure. I don't know about all smartphones. And then it's a, they also do this kind of neat thing. This is different from the tablet. Like when the, with the tablet, when you do this, sorry, it does what it did, right? You mm -hmm. see that thing, right? But because this is a phone, it's a little different. Like so this side of the screen is what you see on the outside. <laughs> so this is like your primary home screen. Mm -hmm. And then the first four buttons are on the outside as well. And then this other stuff is just the other side of the screen. So it, it's like they kind of handled that in a fairly elegant manner, I, which I think is neat. Um, and then the other big thing going on here is just the, um, and I will write about this probably today, is just the app situation. Like I got a, like I got the Pixel tablet, reviewed that. And there's an issue on Android with full screen, you know, big screen apps and how does that work and everything. And on a tablet, I, I found that most, most apps are actually... Most apps I would use on a tablet, and this is me. I mean, some people, like, if you want to use Instagram on a tablet, Instagram is just a phone app. So mm -hmm. it sits there in the middle of a giant screen, like a little phone thing, and it, this black space on either side of it's stupid. I mean, you can side by side it and do all that stuff, but there's nothing you can do to stretch it out or make it look better. And, uh, and the app is just not designed for that. And so, same thing on the phone, you know, but, but it's a phone, right? So if you open Instagram, like it, you know, goes to the middle of the screen. This is mm -hmm. exactly like the tablet. You can tap over here and it will go, okay, double tap, whatever. I don't know why it's not working, but you can – anyway, I don't know why it didn't work. <laughs> why isn't it working? Oh, there you go. Well, anyway, it goes to the side of the screen, et cetera. Um, and you can bring up like a taskbar, and you can be like, I want this camera app to be in that side, and it goes over there. You know, so yeah. cool. But on a phone, you use different types of apps, you know, and – there, there are a lot, there's some apps that only do the little thing like that. There are some apps like Facebook that actually go an inch further for some reason. <laughs> like they're they're designed, I guess, for different form factors or something. Um, there are apps that that do work well full screen. Yeah, you can do the side by side thing. Like I said, it's it's an interesting thing. I I think most people probably would just use it like a phone most of the time. So you use the outside screen, and then sometimes you want you're maybe watching a movie, uh, maps or reading or whatever i don't know you want the bigger screen the other actually that's the other weird thing so if you i don't know how well this will look on video but if you go into like kindle <laughs> if you go into kindle um so you're reading like a book right and okay yes so it's like a little wide i can't really see it doesn't really matter but if you go this way it's a little thinner mm -hmm. and it actually is more like i would like if that makes sense 
and and you can do that. Like it's fine. There's no reason not to do it, right? I mean, it, it, it's, I, I think it actually. I don't know. I think it makes sense. The the crease is not an issue. Um, How is it one handed? In what form? See, <laughs> like like when I use my phone, I'm not sit, like I don't I'm not like bat winging it on the side. Like it's yeah, just me so, just sitting there going like blah blah blah. Well, like blah, this, blah. it's obviously fine, right? And it's small enough that it's it's good for single hand use. I don't know that you would use it with one hand. Well, all right. So I read I read it on it this morning. So I mean I don't know how I can demonstrate this, but I can't. So I I. I would kind of hold it off. To, I, I, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I sit in a chair so I can kind of lean it on the, you know, the arm of the chair. It's okay. But I usually use like an iPad air for that. Right. So I don't know. My wife reads on a phone, so her phone's bigger, but it's one screen. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't watch her do it. I, I don't know if she uses two hands or one hand, but I mean, I don't know. It doesn't feel that awkward. I, I, I don't know. See, I'm, I'm afraid to take it out in the world for one thing, but you know, the camera's pretty good. From what I can see, it's good. It's like Pixel good. Like, it's not Pixel 7 Pro good, but it's, you know, good. It's really good. Um, I don't know what that... I mean, I think most of the time you just sorry, use it normally, right? Like a phone. Like, you'd be out taking yeah, pictures. Yeah, see, that would I mean, be my... But you could do that old person iPad thing, right? And have the whole, you know, have it open like this. Mm -hmm. And you could see the view across both screens. Like, there's some advantage just to seeing that i guess if you were hard you know if you had bad eyesight or whatever i don't know it's interesting obviously it's a pixel so reliability concerns mm -hmm. um the, it's way too early to say but i have to say i've always had well not always i've the last two generations of pixel i've had like battery life concerns like it was all day technically but just barely kind of thing yeah. like this one actually seems better somehow which is weird to me it shouldn't uh with all the screens going on here but uh, so far, it's been, well, I guess there's more space for battery, technically. I don't know. I don't know. It's early, so I'm going to, you know, I got to keep going with it. Too much money for me. It's too much money. Yeah, yeah, I, that, for straight up. And actually, if that oh, thing was so, 1200 bucks, right. it would be home run. Yep. So, yeah, that's actually a huge issue. So, if you think about Pixel, the, and this is, hasn't always been the case, but like right now, last two generations of Pixel and presumably the next one, like I, I'd have to look at it. I, I want to say the Pixel Pro, whatever it is, is probably eight hundred dollars, right, to start. An iPhone starts at nine ninety nine, but that's the smaller one. Mm -hmm. To get the big thing with similar screen, it's what is eleven hundred bucks. So Pixel significantly undercuts the market leader. Same thing with Samsung is even worse. The Samsung S whatever twenty three Ultra is probably thirteen hundred dollars full list. Not mm -hmm. that anyone should ever pay that, but. Um, this is just as much as a Samsung, whatever they call it, the Z flip or whatever. Um, it shouldn't be. Yeah. I, I, they don't have a, a brand to float this price. I, I think this is, I think the price is the Achilles heel for sure. Yep. But you know, but then again, you buy it up front, especially if you get it right away, you get good trade-ins, you know, like the stupid trade-ins. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember anymore. I looked at it at the time, but like my iPhone, which is closing in on being two years old was like. You know, probably eight or nine hundred bucks on trade. It was like way more than it's. It's not worth anything close to that. So, you can do. You know, you could help yourself that way too. But I you're right. Trade you in, <laughs> sir. <Sure. laughs> it wouldn't be expensive. <laughs>